Okay, everyone, we are wrapping up with summer. How have you been doing on the soul, mind, and body summer focus, which is looking at our addictions and bad habits? How has that been going? Have you been paying attention? That's really the focus, taking every day as it comes, this 24 hours, and looking at your life capturing those emotions, capturing those thoughts when they come in, choking them, capturing those evil spirits, capturing those lies, and making them obedient to Jesus. As we look at the summer passing by, let's take a moment to reflect and say, okay, how did I do? I have been looking back and I'm saying, all right, I'm pretty much the exact same that I was the whole summer. And if I look at myself, I'm going to pat myself on the back because typically the summer is a little bit crazy. You're eating more, you're drinking more, you're not paying much attention. Your life is a little bit less routine. It seems like when we get into the September and October and November months, we fall back into more rigor in our lives. So I'm looking at my 0% gain, 0% loss kind of reflection, and I'm saying, I'm a good and faithful servant. I didn't go crazy up. I didn't go crazy down. You're talking just a couple of pounds here and there. But I want to remind everyone, it's not about the weight for me. It's not what the weight is and what the measurements are that come off of my electronic scale is data. It's data for me to look at and say, okay, how am I doing outside of what I feel? I know my body when it's strong. I know my body when I am working it out and and nourishing it in the right way. And the scale could say one thing, but my body could feel totally different. So I have to take into consideration everything as I look at Where am I going next? Because that is how the road goes, my friends. It's not like you arrive at your goal and then you go back to the way you were. That's how we continue to cycle in this life of ours, going back to the way we were. It means how do I move forward from here? What cool new thing am I going to focus on in this next month? for example. So for me, you know, I had an amazing, if you listen to this podcast regularly, go back to the assumption of Mary, or or my title is something like, I have forgotten Mary so many times, you know, I have an on and off hot and cold relationship with her. And I noticed as I was speaking and I was praying that I haven't consecrated to myself, to Jesus through her, yet this year. So last year, I consecrated myself to her through the true devotion of Mary. And that was by St. Louis de Montfort. It is one of the most intense, intense consecrations. It requires accessing other books And praying out of other books, it is a long, lengthy, daily commitment. If you are not up for that, don't do it. There's a reason I took 10 years (laughs) to do that consecration. But there's also a reason that that consecration changed my life. And that's another reason why I'm going back to it. So what I need you to do is look at your soul, your mind, and your body. For me, September needs to be a soul month. I feel September is a seasonal change month. It's funny, if you look at the days that you're supposed to start a consecration, which is typically 33 days, there's only one day in September, and it's September 4th. And it ends on October 7th, Our Lady of the Rosary. I'm going to be traveling. During that time when I travel and I speak, I want 
my heart and my soul to be steeped in prayer. And so doing something like true devotion to Mary is exactly what I think I need. That's my next focus, my next challenge. Yes, I will stay on my course, meaning in my keto life, and I will be focusing on different things with my workouts. Like right now, I just need to get my body back into moving. So yesterday I'd made a comment that I need to get some ab workout going on on my video in YouTube because for the past five days, I've had really bad stomach issues. I am not doing sit-ups my stomach hurt so bad. There was, I haven't moved my abs in so long. And yesterday I could feel it. I was very weak. Although I pushed myself through the video, I still could feel the difference. So it's not like I'm going to stop on the soul, mind, and body incorporating everything. But I know that when I dive into this true devotion to Mary, It's going to change everything. Everything will be lit on fire. How do I know? Because I've done it before. Maybe you've never consecrated yourself to Mary. Again, I would highly recommend you try 33 Days to Morning Glory or just go out there and search Consecration to Jesus through Mary and there will be a bunch of other ones that come up, I'm sure. Again. True devotion to Mary is like a part-time job, so don't bite off more than you can chew, but a challenge is a challenge. And I'm telling you, it is an intense book, so if you have it, it's hard to read. I do it on my audiobook, and I play it back a lot because it is dense. It's very dense. It's very intense, but it connects for me. Maybe it's not a consecration, like I said. Maybe you want to dive into Ignatian spirituality and you want to understand more about mental prayer, so find books on that. Maybe you want to read St. Faustina's Diary. That bad boy is, you know, about three inches thick. Beautiful stuff in there, you know. You read a page or a chapter every day and then you highlight and you reflect and you look at your life This is what prayer is all about. Or maybe it's just that you do the two videos that I created for you that walk you through mental prayer, that walk you through how to do a prayer petition to the Lord. Like, this is who I don't want to be anymore. This is who I do want to be now. And then come out of that prayer a new spirit with a renewed mind. You can look at your soul, mind, and body, and it doesn't mean that you have to do a soul challenge with me, but I have a feeling that a lot of you need it. I'm not sure how many of you dove into your soul, learning new things during the summer. And if that's the case, you're along with everybody else in the the liturgical church. I mean, it seems to me like the Catholic Church just kind of takes a break during the summer, giving the priests some time to reconnect with their spiritual life. That's when all the priests take quote unquote vacation and or their time away on pilgrimage. It's just a different time of the year, but things spin around. You can sense it. You can feel it. It's not just a weather thing. It is a, I think, spiritual thing as well. Our lives kind of change this time of the year. And the most important thing, of course, that made me think about this and to look at my month of September and come to you for you guys to think about it was this beautiful quote from St. Alphonsus Liguori. A soul which does not practice the exercise of prayer is very like a paralyzed body which though possessing feet and hands, makes no use of them. I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes we have our feet and hands, but we don't even use them. 
A soul which does not practice the exercise of prayer is very like a paralyzed body, which though possessing feet and hands makes no use of them. Let's think about that. Are you walking around not using your feet and your hands? Basically not praying? So, take this into prayer. You want to join me on a consecration to Jesus through Mary? Find one that's right for you, where you are at your journey. Maybe you've never done it before. I'd suggest 33 Days to Morning Glory, or just again, like I said, go online and search 33 Day Consecration to Jesus Through Mary. Many books will come up. Some may be audible. Again, you may want that. Some may be physical books. You might need that. Others of you want Kindles where you can carry them on any device. Whatever works for you, however you learn, this is why this is unique. The walk is specific to you, but we can do things together that are unique, but are similar, if that makes sense. (laughs) Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come help us move forward in this journey. Looking back on our summer, how did we do? What do we need to focus on? How can we continue to keep the three-legged stool of our lives in the balance that it needs to be? Help us to understand if we really have our soul where it needs to be. Is our spiritual life really the center of our lives? Are we truly seeing Jesus in ourselves, in the way that we witness our lives, in our prayer life? Are we doing what Jesus did? And go up to the mountain in the early, early part of the morning and pray? Who do we think we are if Jesus needs to pray, especially in the most intense times of his life? Why would we think we don't? Lord, please help us honestly desire to spend that time with you to want to be with you, to love you, to throw ourselves at your mercy and to ask you to shower your grace in our lives so that we can make these permanent changes and we can be that mirror neuron for all the people that watch us so that when we do better, they do better. They see the excitement and the happiness and the zeal that comes from God oozing through us, and they want it. But first, Lord, we have to want it. So we ask you to come into our hearts, to renew our minds today, to get us excited for the next challenge that you have for us so that we can grow in our soul, our minds, and our bodies with you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mary, take our left hand. Holy Spirit, take our right. Please guide us through this day as we walk together. Help us to love one another and guide us again to Jesus' heart where all things are easy, where our burdens are light, where if we humbly let it all go, he can help us today. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So pray on it. Again, maybe it's not a consecration, but maybe it is something where you are picking up a new book and you are learning new things. It could be a program. Maybe it's my prayer program. It's a 40-day prayer program, but just look in the description notes you can start it a little early and end on the 7th. <laughs> you know, I mean, you don't have to start on the day of this consecration. I'm just saying it is a time of change. And we should constantly be looking at the next thing or continuing on the thing that we're not doing so good at. 
Like if it's diet for you and you just couldn't stay on any kind of track, you were constantly going back to your sugar addictions, constantly going back to your carb addictions. That's a time for you to look and say, okay, wait, it's a seasonal change. Maybe you're now thinking, well, it's even worse because now I'm getting into comfort zone and, you know, Christmas time parties and stuff. And that's even harder for me than the summer. Well, this is where we've got to say, okay, well, it's never going to be the perfect time. There's always going to be seasons that'll be challenging for us. But that doesn't mean that we don't move forward to be the healthiest that we can be. It's not about... It's about our health span, not about our life span, how long we live. It's how healthy are we and how much of a quality of life we have while we are living. And of course, being an evangelist and being a witness of self-control and all that is also part of it. Okay, time to pray. You got some time here. September isn't right here, but I do want us all to shift a gear and figure out what is our next focus going to be, soul, mind, and body. And it doesn't mean it has to be just, it has to be all three, by the way. But there should be some major focus. And I really want to say, based on that St. Alphonsus Liguori quote, most people are not praying. They're not using their hands and their feet. And life is so much better when we do. So, Pray on it. (laughs) Find something more with God, everyone. Soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power. And hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So... I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today.